If you love art and art history, you may well have asked yourself, well, what's coming next? In this video, we're going to do a quick refresh on the past, get some focus on the present, and even have a sneak peek at what might be coming up in the future. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Angus MacDonald, welcoming you, and I'm the curator of Retro Modernism. Now, whether you are an artist, a collector, a dealer, or simply crazy about art, there's possibly a few questions that you ask yourself on a fairly regular basis. Where do we fit into the whole scheme of things, given that art history is 40,000 years old, especially the most recent part? Where are we actually today? And most importantly of all, where are we likely to be going in the near future? Now, I hope that we're going to be answering a few of these questions in today's video. And what I can certainly guarantee that you will get from this video and also videos in the future that we'll be posting is a fresh take on classical and period art, certainly a compass to navigate the fairly tricky waters of contemporary art, and thirdly, and this is really the kicker, the opportunity to be a pioneer, to genuinely become part of what we hope is going to be a new chapter in art history i.e. retromodernism. Now, if you have any questions or comments on what you've heard so far, drop them into the comments box below. If you already feel that what I'm saying is chiming with you and striking some kind of chord, just go for it, subscribe. It would be great to have you on board and with us for the journey. So let's rewind a little bit. And the first movement I want to talk about, and obviously we're not going to go into a lot of detail because these are huge movements. We will post videos in the future and we will deep dive into them. But let's talk about modernism. Now, modernism, there ain't that much modern about it. We are talking about a movement which effectively started, I would say, possibly 1873. Impression Sunrise is a painting by Claude Monet, which, which really set the tone and kicked the whole thing off. And then we're, we're talking about 60 years of absolutely incredible development, incredible range. We're talking about artists who go from Renoir, Gauguin, Picasso, Duchamp, Dali, right the way up to Lucio Fontana and the Futurists. That's a lot of movements. That's Cubism, Fauvism, Expressionism, uh, uh, Surrealism, a whole bunch of things thrown in. And that's not even mentioning architecture. You've got the Bauhaus movement in there. You've got Le Corbusier. You've got Frank Lloyd Wright. If we look into literature, uh, we, we can mention T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, Friedrich Nietzsche, Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud are in there. And we're also talking about a period which, which covers, in terms of history, the emancipation of women. Emily Pankhurst, we're talking about the Industrial Revolution, we're talking about two world wars that are in there. This is, this is big stuff and, and stuff with social impact which is reflected in the art. But what was modernism? It was kind of a, a, a rejection of everything that had gone before it, the, 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 the canons of the Age of Enlightenment. It was a rebellion. It was a move towards free expression, although it still had some sort of control. Now, if we start to talk about postmodernism, which kicks in, sort of slightly overlapping, around about the time of World War II, that just takes the lid off the box. That is, it's a free-for-all. I mean, it's kind of, it, it's all art for all men, to be honest. Uh, we're talking about abstract, conceptual, pop art, performance, installation, video, digital, the whole gamut, no parameters. And of course, the artists that we're putting into there is everybody from Jackson Pollock through Andy Warhol to Jeff Koons, all under one label. Well, you could possibly come back to me and say, well, Jeff Koons, Andy Warhol, they're actually contemporary artists, and you'd be right. Now, this, this overlap again, it, it creates a little bit of confusion, a little bit of, um, well, what it does create, first and foremost, is the opportunity, obviously, for academics and for uh, critics to put forward their case, to show themselves that they have theory, um, and to debate uh, where one thing starts, where another thing ends. It, it's great debate. It also affords uh, a very active art market the possibility to hype and to 
create value, let, let, let's say that, create value. In the meantime, since uh, postmodernism kind of waned and, and this all-embracing contemporary art label emerged, there have been some, certainly some noteworthy uh, contributions. I would certainly point to the young British artists, Damien Hirst, Tracy Emin, Jake and Dinas Chapman, who gave a huge contribution. And thankfully, most recently, um, a lot of attention has begun to turn towards very, very deserving women artists, um, Ameri African American artists, and artists from around the globe, all of which is long overdue. But at the same time, it feels as though there's still a space, still uh, a narrative which is just begging to be told, and, and that obviously for us is retromodernism. Now given the huge impact that, that, that social and cultural events have, have had on art movements in the past, this is a moment of break. It's a moment of epoch changing importance. And I'm talking of course about COVID-19. It's killing people. It's killing business. It is a total nightmare for so many people. But at the same time, the combination of that disruption together with the opportunities that are available thanks to internet, who knows? We feel, obviously, that retromodernism is a, is a terrific narrative. It helps people to get into past art. It explains a lot of things about present art. And of course, it's a, it's a timeline which you can go up and down it and point to cases of retromodernism all the way up and down the line. Once again, uh, if there's anything you'd like to know more about, post a comment, post a question, hit the subscribe button, get in touch and become part of this. That's really what we'd love to happen. Now, I can't actually shut this video down without just saying a huge, huge thanks to Sean Canal, Think Media. Again, in the descriptions below, there'll be a link so you know what I'm talking about. But I just want to say, you guys have completely changed my perspective, my idea of, of how to do this that I'm doing now, it's making a simple video, but how to go about it. And most of all, how to give fantastic value to the people that are watching, to you who's watching. If this video is better than the last one, and each time hopefully they'll get 1% better, 1% better, 1% better, that's thanks to those guys. So check out what they do, and believe me, it's well worthwhile. Thanks again. Subscribe buttons, wherever it is, I'm, I'm still getting used to that. But anyway, thank you, and see you next time. One week's time, to be precise. That's my commitment.